the idea. He's yeah. like, Rich, go with me here. The people that come on Friday, and he had a chart. He had a, a flow chart followed by a, a PowerPoint and an antenna that showed. Oh, wait, no, that pointer. We were all in our lab coats back at uh, HQ. And the year said, was 1967. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, people are labeled. It was a, a film strip. Robbie says, we call her <laughs> the Atom. Uh, Friday is attended by people. So Robbie said, what if we, and he put his safety goggles on and used his tongs to move the word Friday. Very close to, we weren't sure how they would react chemically. That's right. Close to the word people. That's right. And he stood back and what we saw before us was, well, shocking. He said, we're going to call those people to show up on Friday. Friday people. And then what Rich did is Rich was like, I like it. You're almost there. And he put a Dick Jr. right up and said, Dick Jr.'s Friday people. <laughs> now, you're, now, it's now, so now we're having a conversation. And Rob said, but I, but I. I said, good work, Bobo. You're, <laughs> you're off the clock. I'll take it from here. <laughs> made t-shirts. The rest is history. I branded you people because you deserve to be branded. You are the ones who show up. You are the ones who get it. You, got, you guys who go, hey. I'm not going to show up on Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to be there for the whole thing. When people say, hey, did you ever go to a supernatural convention? I want to be able to say, yeah, I did. I went to the whole effing supernatural convention. Thank you very much. I attended it all. I went. I enjoyed. I overspent. But if you think about the rates of inflation, I mean, what you're spending now, which is, uh, I think, I think uh, fiscally, it's, uh, if you translate it, it's a shitload. In the future, it'll seem like nickels and dimes. You know what I mean? Like, when, when Mamaw says, when I was your age, we'd go down to the parlor and get a, 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 a root beer float for a nickel. And you say, a nickel? My God, that's, that's, that's nothing. It's like, are you kidding me? It took us six weeks to work for that nickel. It was a, life, life was a hellscape. And all we got was that stupid root beer float. It quit being a smart ankle. Mamaw's a little cranky. Yeah, she is. Four or three fingers of bourbon, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, that's what it's going to be like. You'll be crusty and old, like our age. And you'll tell people, when I was your age, I moseyed over to a city nowhere near Chicago <laughs> and bought a photo with Jared Padalecki for $4,000. A measly $4,000. And your, and your space family will say, who are hovering above you, will say, only $4,000. That's what it cost me for this space coffee. So you got to look at it through that lens. And also, you also have to think to yourself, honestly, you may never be in a convention nowhere near Chicago again. You'll always have another chance to eat. You know? There are other apartment buildings. <laughs> you get evicted, you just go get another one. Not a big deal. So you got to think logically about this. You got to use some common sense. You don't use common sense. Where are we? You know what I mean? I'll tell you where we are. We're not in Chicago. No. I just realized it does say it on the sign. The sign is accurate. Oh my God. They did this. I, they've never done that. No. It used to say Chicago. This is a keepsake. This, whoever gets this, is getting something special. And I, you know what? Don't stop me. I'm feeling crazy. I'm, I'm going to make this a bargain. This is only going to cost you $4,000. You're welcome. One space coffee. And you get your own, you get your own lectern labeler for your lectern at home. But we're not at your home right now because that would be weird. We're here in nowhere near Chicago, celebrating the Supernatural Convention this weekend. And we're doing so with the dulcet tones of Loudon Swain playing over here to my left. Let's say good morning to the boys in the band. On the drums, the Shake Master General, Stephen Norton. On the bass guitar, 
a man who raised over $7,000 for pediatric cancer in Las Vegas, Nevada, Robot Michael Borja. <laughs> On the guitar, a man who, ah, 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 ah. When Robbie put that hat on Borja, it was just a <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah, Baba. Get the party started. Where does this hat go? It goes on your bald head. I'm coming in for a landing, Borja. Whoop. Yeah, Mama. Get this dog and pony show rolling. And on that note, born from the loins of the devil himself, the patron saint of suddenly giving a shit, Mr. Billy Moran on the guitar. <laughs> oh. And fronting this ensemble, you know him, you love him, and ironically today, he's cosplaying Billy Moran, Rob Benedict. Thank you, Chicago! Let's do this! I sign up my old brown shoes, put on a brand new shirt, get home early to work. I sign up my old brown shoes, put on a brand new shirt, get home early to work. Just to Say that you love me. Did not, did not, did not see you crying. Oh, did not, did not, did not see you crying. Feel all alone at a bed, you don't know, feel like dying. Oh, did not, did not, did not see you crying. I, you listen, great job, band. I honestly feel like Billy and Rob, you kind of are channeling your Jared and Jensen. You kind of got that like hip, lumber sexual, you know, edgy. Yep. Who's who? Uh, ironically, I'm Jared. Is that right? Even though I'm shorter than Billy. And you're Jensen? Yeah. Boy, well, is Jensen always checking his watch? Is that a. I literally, I'm in the middle of the bed about That's... you, and you can't not look at your iPhone. Well, it's. What are we doing? It's weird, what that are we doing? weird that you don't know that already. <laughs> that you oh. can't tell, but obviously. Clearly. But hold on one second. Billy doesn't talk much. Billy is the, is the Marcel Marceau of the band. And I, I, I want you to do your, your, your Jensen again. That was good. What are we doing? This is a bit. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> He's been paying attention. I love it. Uh, I'm also paying attention to the fact that we have a, a guest to bring up on this stage. We do? We do. I know you thought we come out, we intro, we go home, but yeah, no. no. There's That's actually how this works, huh? There's actually actors to show up. Ooh. And this first young lady is a powerhouse of a person and a powerhouse of a performer. And we start her out, gets the party started, like this woman on the stage. Put your hands together for Rachel Miner! Oh yeah, she's on fire! Got her own ramp that's lit up with lights. Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay. What was happening with those introductions? I don't know. You know, Robbie did this. Rob did a real sultry move with Mike and a hat, and it there, got everybody all hot and bothered. And... There, there was some exciting stuff going on. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, robots really do sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I will just say that as Rachel was was taking her position on the stage and, and Rob's over there sort of like being a gentleman to make sure she's oh, all set up, yeah. I turn over this way and I hear, woo, which was you kind of giving her a rock and roll scream. But I had this panic moment that like, oh no, Ra something's going pear-shaped over here. Like, uh, Rachel's going, ah! Or, <laughs> your, your rock and roll scream and your, and your help are very you, similar. You know what? It's bound to happen one of these days. Yes. I've fully accepted that. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> More likely is that Mike's going to fall off the stage. That's what I worry about. Is that what it is? Yeah. It is more likely. Well, I, you know, Rachel's not falling off the stage. You no, notice she's not. They go, you got your own lighted highway there. Yeah, yeah. That's so kind of cool. Was, I was going for it. There was one time that there was like an odd jaggedness, and yes. I just like kind of feared. And you went in quick. You went yeah. in fast. It was scary. <laughs> You've been drinking. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. It was dark, dark days. But not this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Miner. Hello. How are you? I, I, I feel like I will, if I keep saying it, somehow people will stop believing it, but I can't stop saying it. I love you all so much. And I mean it. You dearly, are you having a good time? Like, is this the beginning? Okay. Good, it's gonna be an awesome weekend. And we've got like no storms or anything happening. It's beautiful. We, we have good noises happening on this stage. Uh, I'll try to keep it up. Do we have questions? Yes, we do. Hey, yeah. thank you. What's your question? Uh, well, how was your day? My day? That's a cool question. My day's going pretty well, actually. I'm really happy to be here. And the shower was a really nice shower. That makes a difference. Yeah. I like the little like hotel uh, shampoos and stuff, which is unusual for me, but they're all like organic and uh, like animal cruelty free and things like that. And that, just, that makes me happy. So, so yeah, just the little things. How's your day? been pretty nice so far, I'm be honest. Good. Well, I hope it gets better and better. I'm sure it will. Do we have, uh, okay. Because I'm going to start asking you questions. Hi there. Hey. <laughs> um, so I know you do this all the time. This is my second con. Um, welcome. Thank you. I am so ecstatic to be here again. Uh, my first one was last year in Denver. And uh, it was, you know, I'd never done anything like that before. Uh, and I was just so excited to be there. And uh, I've had a rough couple of years. Um, I'm currently going through a divorce, and that's just the tip of everything that I've been going through. And um, last year when I went to Denver, it was a really cool experience, and it changed a lot of things for me. And you were a big part of that. And I just really want to thank you. Um, I got to run into you a couple times because of the way everything was set up. And I got to talk to you and stuff. And I finally got to take a photo with you this time. And I'm, I'm so ecstatic that I'm here. The, everything trying to get here was a disaster, trying to travel from Denver to Chicago. But you live and you learn. And through everything you go through, you know, it, you get experience. And I got a lot of that recently. And... Oh, I can, I, can I just interrupt for a second and say ahead. thank you so much for everything you're saying? And it. Okay, um, can we all agree life is really hard? <laughs> okay, good. Um, yes, there is not. I, I think that like make it through is hard, and I think the only way to make it through is uh, with friends and. Uh, that's what I, I, I feel like we all have found this kind of magic thing where we support each other and, um, you know, I'm sorry you've been dealing with the difficulties you've been dealing with and, um, but also let me and everyone else here be here for you to help, uh, to help lift you up because uh, I think that's how we're all going to make it through. So, <laughs> that's all. Anyway, you can keep going. <laughs> Well, I don't want to keep rambling, but I did want to just convey to you like how much that event was a catalyst for change in my life. And um, 
she wants me to get to a question. I, I'll be honest, I don't really have a question. I just wanted to tell you how special you are and how grateful I am that I'm here. And just thank you for who you are and for the power strength within myself. So thank you. Thank you so much. And right back at you. And seriously, that's, let's just keep doing that for each other. And I'm so glad to know you. Hello. Oh, we now have, we, we're starting to balance. We snuck, we snuck nice. up here. Welcome. Is what is one thing that you would like us to know, either something about you or something you just think is important to have out in the world? Um, well, I, you know, I really try to keep putting things, uh, out there that I, that I feel are important. Um, one thing, I guess if I think that I could import in the world, it's that, uh, there is still hope. And I hope, I know that sounds cheesy, but, um, it's so, I think we all waver. We all go through those moments where it just feels like, what's the point or are we going to be able to do this or whatever? And I just, I, if there's anything that I could, like if I only got to say one thing, it would be, no, no, we, we can still do this. Um, all of it. We can still make the world what we think it should be. And let's not forget that. And let's not uh, take our earlier losses to heart too much. Um, let's learn from them and let's keep going. Does that, is that? I think that that's a really important message for a lot of us right now, because we're feeling kind of hopeless, especially maybe politically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so again, um, believe me, and I, I've had some dark days on this too, because well, of course you do if you're paying attention. But, um, but here's one of the things, that the conclusions I finally came to is, you know what? Here's how it could be a good thing. Sometimes, you know, things have gotten so bad that we're not going to keep moving little bit by little bit uh, with, you know, going along with the status quo and trying to make small changes uh, for the better. Because you know what? We really don't, and, I, and I'm being, I know this sounds kind of negative, but realistically, we don't have that much time as a human race, as a civilization. We've kind of taken up are all of our extra credit and but it, like we've used everything um and we've got to make some big changes for the better and really rethink things and how to how to uh establish better systems because it's not just an individual person it's just really long-term systemic problems that are manifesting in in this way um, and so, so yeah, I feel, I mean, I feel very strongly, but one of the reasons I love working at Random X is, um, I feel like it's, it's actually really viable to just say, you know what, we need to create a better world. What does that world look like? And stop playing by whatever old set of rules. It's going to totally change the game up and uh, make it a better one. And I think that it, we're at that time. Does that make sense? Totally. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Hi, Rachel. Hey. Hello. So I was wondering if you could have any spin-off of the Harry Potter series. Uh, like the Marauders? Would you like more about their children? What do you think? Gosh. <laughs> I can, I can do heavy duty political. This is hard. <laughs> this is like too important. I don't want to mess this up. Um, hmm. Oh my goodness. I feel like I know, I know I actually have like an answer and I'm going to get there. Um, I mean, to me, w one of the th things I love most is the school. So it has to surround that. Um, but also, I don't know. It, like, it, honestly, my ideal spinoff would not be a very interesting spinoff because I think it would be like going through every single text in the library at Hogwarts. <laughs> I want to somehow like be able to read all of those 
things of like all the history of magic and learn it all. Um, I am someone who wanted to read the dictionary so that I could learn every word. Um, so, so yeah, I don't, uh, I, that's not a good or interesting answer, but I think it's a kind of honest one. What about you? Uh, definitely the Marauders. Nice. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for the wonderful question. And I want to see the Marauders. Hi there. Hey. Um, I just want to tell you, for one thing, uh, following you on social media like really makes my day. You these little blurbs of sunshine really, really do it for me. Thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. Um, but my question actually is about um, Random Acts and Gish. Is there anything new coming up that you're associated with this? I'd love to hear it. Um, there's always all sorts of new and good plots and plans and stuff. But... Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to give anything away either. I know, I know I'm excited for the gestures that are going to go to New Zealand really soon. Um, I'm excited for the new, what's going to come up. I know little bits about some of the change of life. Um, we know there will be one, so I feel like I'm not giving anything away there. Um, I'm really excited for it. That's always my favorite part of Gish as much as I love everything else too, uh, the change of life is the most exciting thing to me. Um, and I feel like that's where we shine as this you know, supernatural family as Gishers or whatever. It's just showing again how you can change the world. And um, I think I'm mo most excited about probably coming up. Also, I'm loving, we're doing a lot of good uh, childhood hunger acts uh, coming off of the money you all put there uh, with a bad idea to warn e 4 k um, So I'm very excited for that. Amok is coming up very soon, which will be really fun. Yeah, it's coming up at the end of April. It's always like tons and tons of goodness and good things. Um, but yeah, I don't, I like to, you know, s sprinkle them across. So I hope that gave you enough of a good tease. Thank you for the sprinkles. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, Rachel. Hey. How um, are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, uh, it's kind of a two-part question. Yes. Your tattoos, do they have any meanings? And the second question is, are you planning on getting any more? Those amazing questions. <laughs> so uh, tattoos, a couple things. I mean... So this is a lotus, uh, which has a lot of meaning like in, in Buddhism and so forth. I, I love the significance of that. Uh, I won't go into it. I, th I think most people know like, the significance of coming out of the mud and it symbolizing enlightenment and all of those things. Um, but I, you know, I love the idea that you know, beauty can come out of dirt. <laughs> it's a good thing. But also, uh, I got it. it I, be, the fact that it's done in watercolor meant something to me because uh, I really love the idea of drawing outside the lines um, and, you know, not conforming perfectly. So, uh, so yeah, so that's what that means. Um, and then I've got an arrow on one arm and uh, it's a feather quill on the other. Um, and that's partly to remind me to keep writing um, and also to always tell the truth. So I kind of thought the, the straight arrow is like, to me, helps symbolize fearless honesty and, uh, and to keep communicating that as the feather quill on the other side. And then um, on my neck, I've got a symbol, a Tibetan symbol um, of Tara, uh, which is a bodhisattva of compassion. Um, really cool one. I love the fact that it, it's actually it's one of those um, myths that changed over time and culture and things. Uh, it's she, he started out as a he uh, called Avalokiteshvara, which was supposed to be the original bodhisattva that the Dalai Lama incarnated with eventually incarnated into the Dalai Lama. 
Um, I'm going to, I'm totally nerd. I'm going to put you all to sleep. Um, but basically, and then uh, look up Tara if you want. Uh, and then also she became Quan Yin in Chinese. One of those cool things to see how we adopt and take these ideals and uh, give them different forms. Um, so I really love that. Uh, and then I've got a phoenix on my ankle and I cover it up. I, I had my ex's name tattooed on my ankle. <laughs> so the phoenix was, and then um, I've got uh, a fairy, which was my very first I got when I was 16 and that's on my lower back. Um, I've heard them called tramp stamps, but I think that because I got it when I was 16, it was 1996, I don't think they were called that yet. So I think it's safe. I don't know. Um, and, uh, and the fairy was to always remind me to keep that uh, spirit of joy. And uh, I, I actually debated my mom to allow me to get it because... I said, she was like, yeah, but you're going to get older and you won't want it anymore and it will always be on your body. And I was like, yeah, but I want it most when I don't want it. Because to me, freedom, that, that spirit of freedom and joy and whatever is something that I want reminding when I get to, like I was like, if I ever get too old to think that that is something that I want on my body. So, um, so yeah, anyway, that, that's what I've got. I don't know... Um, I don't have like anything in my head right now that I'm like, I need to get that. But I feel like that will probably happen in the future because I love, I love tattoos. So I do too. Yeah. I do too. Thank um, you. Anyway, thank you all for putting up with my very long winded <laughs> answer. Hey. Hi, my name is Adrian. Hi. I, I love you. Let me just tell you, this is my first con, so I've never been here before. Um, so the question I'm going to ask is probably boring, but... It's not boring, and it's good to see you. And you were just in the photos, too, yeah. right? Yeah, it's good to see you. <laughs> and so the question for me, because Meg 2.0 is my favorite, one of my favorite, favorite characters. Love her. I loved you because you were... <laughs> me too. Badass, badass. <laughs> is any kids? I'm sorry. But I just wanted... You know, I'm still angry about the when you died yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's been a long enough i know i, I know <laughs> but i was still mad at the boys i love the boys but i'm still mad at them that they they ran into the car and took off right. i'm still and they angry. never told Cass. i know like, what happened <laughs> I, you know and i no. i'm just saying that i do all these uh like marathons of characters and i just yeah. did one of you and i just love it I don't, I don't have a question i just say how do you feel about that I, just I, took I, off. I i love you so that's awesome no, and it's it's so true. Like I loved her. I actually loved her exit. I love the fact that uh, she did not question her loyalty for like a second. She just sacrificed herself. She did not make a big deal out of it. She saved the guys. Um, I like everything about that felt so right. But I do think it's hilarious that it happened. But. They've never had a scene where the guys were like, like Castle, like, whatever happened to that big chick <laughs> or something? <laughs> like it never, it never occurred. So yeah, I, I did think I noticed that Jared did something nice where he actually gave that moment. He made it more of a moment because he gave a car that was actually really really that meant something. Like it, it, you could see he. He was really taking in. Yeah, Dean was just like, let's go. The Dean was, <laughs> Dean was like, I don't care. Uh, but Dean never much cared for me. Like, it's understandable, I guess. Um, no, I mean, I, I think I, I, I think it's it's defiable that the guys were not like so you know crazy about me. <laughs> um, she did, you know, she she did kind of make that bed, but I felt like. Cass should have cared a little more. <laughs> no, but it, anyway, um, it, it was I, it was such a fun story arc, um, and I still and one of the things I love about fantasy in general is that we get to imbue it and live with it as much. It, like it, 
you're free in your imagination to take that story anywhere you want. Um, and I, I feel like that's such an important message, especially when people get into like vying for like their ship is the only ship or whatever. And it's like, you know what? There's so much room in the universe for like infinite number of possibilities. Like, let's make it a multi-dimensional, -dim which it is, like, you know, thing, and all these characters can be together, and all the, you know, and we can all enjoy our dreams coming true. And so, like, for me, in one dimension, I definitely love the idea that, like, Meg is looking out for Cass somehow, or, you know, and that there's still, that love never went anywhere. Um, but that does not in any way take away from anyone else's dreams or imaginations, because that can be happening too, if that makes sense. I'm by, so it's good. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Let's have it all. Well, one of the things, by the way, also, one of the things I loved about those two characters together is I did not feel like they either one fit any kind of traditional gender paradigm. And you know what? The likelihood is also they were both male and female multiple times throughout history. So like it, it didn't like I didn't feel like as a you know couple if you even want to make them that I don't care they like to me that that there was a love she loved him you can make that any kind of love you want that doesn't you know there's no box that needs to fit in um, but also I I like the fact that it wasn't like she was the traditional like female role of you know I was like no she was just her. Um, and even using the pronoun she is arbitrary. Hello. Hey. So I wanted to ask, um, how does going to these cons and doing all this, meeting new people, how does it affect you? And um, how do you, you know, how does it, I mean, how has it changed you? It's it literally been, uh, it's the reason why I'm here existing and filled as a human being. FYI. Um, no, I, I, I don't, like I don't mince words. Like when I say I genuinely love everyone here, I genuinely love you all. And uh, it is because of you that I, that I learned kind of that I could fit, that I could exist, that I was valid in this world, and I want to give that back to everyone else. Um, it's a wonderful freedom, um, especially after getting sick. The fact that you still embraced me and still let me come out and be me, and the fact that, like, <laughs> thank you. Um, Thank you. Oh, and the fact that, you know, in these panels, what I love is we're, like, now fluidly go, like, we cover every subject. It's incredible. It's like, you know, what's the nature of existence? And, you know, who, what's your Hogwarts house? And what light, lightsaber do you use? And, uh, you know, making cast kiss. And I don't know, like, any, like, you name it, it all goes. Um, and I think that's incredible. I don't have to put on any show for anyone. It's just we're all friends. Like, does that? And yeah, yeah. to feel that sense of belonging is everything. That's awesome. So thank you. Yeah, I've been just, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just as much of a fan now as I was when you were on Sons of Anarchy, so. Thank you. So. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, hi, yes. I'm sweating. Um, so it's really good to see you. It's really good to see it's you. It's my birthday weekend. And Happy birthday. Thank you. That's um, awesome. So I don't know if this question was asked before, but if you had a gag reel of your life, what would be in it? I've never been asked that question. That's hilarious and awesome. Um, I like so much, but maybe a lot of things that some people would think were like tragic moments, I would put in my gag reel. Like to me, I'm like, the funniest thing is often how off I can go and like, like, oh, I did that really badly. That was an epic fail. Um, I, I think those are really funny like, to me. Um, uh, so yeah, so it, uh, there'd be a lot. I mean, <laughs> my gag grill would be chock full and I'd probably be the only one laughing hysterically and everyone would be like, this isn't very funny, Rachel. I'd be like, no, it's 
Um, uh, I can think of oh, one of my, okay. So there was a while, and again, it's, it's, it's veering on territory that's a little inappropriate to laugh at, but it's me, so I can laugh at it. Um, like, as I was physically deteriorating and struggling, I would go to the gym every day, and I was like determined. I was like, I can do this. Um, but it was really hard, and I was like feeling at a lot of things. Um, but I kind of felt invisible, and it was like my own inner battle and stuff. And I remember one day, someone at the gym I was going to said, you know, just wanted to tell you, like, I'm a fan of Supernatural, and you're such an inspiration to all of us. The fact that you keep coming every day, like that, like, we've been watching you for years. And I all of a sudden realized, like, oh, it's really not anonymous. <laughs> And I don't know what I was doing like, a lot of these times, and I'm sure it was not elegant. Um, there was at least one of those days that I remember. So I was also, my feeling is a little bit off. It's like um, when you sit on your legs and you get pins and needles, how like you can feel some things a lot and other things not so much or whatever. It's like the, the nerve signals are just not quite correct. But um, because of that, I, so I'm not, like, I can't always feel if I have pants on. <laughs> you know where this is going. <laughs> so I was walking, I was trying to make it to the bus, and I was struggling, and I was using my cane at the time, and it was like, my, all of my focus was on trying to stay balanced. And I thought I felt a breeze. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't sure if it was in my head, and I looked down, and sure enough, my pants were around my ankles. <laughs> but I actually couldn't figure out a way to stay balanced and pull my pants up. <laughs> so I had to, like, walk down the rest of the street, like, struggling with, like, my pants around my ankles, as, like, with my kids. Like, there were moments like that that would be on the gag grill, just FYI. So yeah, I, I don't know if that helps. But. Oh no, it did. That was <laughs> okay. I have one more <laughs> pre-sickness. Uh, one of the first nights I spent uh, at an ex's, uh, I remember I went to go get us coffee in the morning, and I cannot equate this with this is nothing to do with the MS. Uh, I went to get us coffee, and I came back, and I, you know, I've always had that kind of uh, ridiculously optimistic thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was so nice. The guy gave us free coffees and like he wouldn't let me pay and whatever. And uh, my boyfriend at the time, he looked at me and he said, yeah, because your tits hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, my shirt had fallen. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, that was how I made a first impression. <laughs> that would be on the gag reel. Coffee. Hey. hey, Rachel, I'm Wendy. How are you? I'm tired. <laughs> By the way, I want to say again, happy birthday. Sorry, you're tired? Yeah, always. Anyway, my question is, is what is the most interesting thing you've had to learn to do for a role? The most interesting thing I've had to learn to do, I, um, one of the things I enjoyed the most was for one role, I had to do like intense fight, fight training with uh, someone who had, he'd come up in the fighting wushu, and he was like one of Jet Li's uh, partners. And um, that was intense, it was really difficult, but it, like to me, it's really fun to challenge yourself in that way. And I love the fact that at first he called me girl, <laughs> and I felt like that was a little bit, it was like, I didn't really, you know, whatever, and he didn't expect me to be able to do anything. And I like held strong through the training, and there were points, I wouldn't take a break until he wanted a break. 
So like there were points my muscles were all shaking and stuff and uh, and he started calling me by my name and I felt like that was a point of pride. That was that was my most fun I've ever had training for a film and learning a new skill. As a, as a stunt person, I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Well, and well done for being a stunt person. No wonder you're tired. <laughs> awesome. Hi. Hey. If the writers would bring you back for season 15, what would you like to happen to Meg? Um, I honestly, so the way I feel with the show is every time I've read a script, it's like opening a present at Christmas. Like I don't want to know ahead of time. I want to see what they dream up. I love that character and that show so much that like to me, it would actually take away from it to dream up something and, and want that and, and, you know, try to control it myself. Like, I actually love the gift of being able to experience the show, so I would want to open that package. Like, I would love to see that. Um, and as I said, like, I would like it to involve cast somehow, definitely. Uh, but, uh, but other than thinking that, I'm like, I, I, I'd be open to so many different things. Uh, do you have something in mind? I think a romance with Cass would be good. <laughs> I, I do have one thing that I would insist on uh, is that I would be using uh, an assistive, assistive device of some kind, that I would be in a chair. Because I have been asked like, uh, by, you know, at panels before, like, would you cheat the walking or whatever? I'm like, no, because I, I think Rep, I, I would love to see better representation, especially of like strong women with disabilities. So, um, so yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Rachel. Hey. I absolutely love when you are on the Wayward podcast. Thank you so much for being on there. Um, my question is, are you going to be on again soon? And if so, what are some topics that you would like to discuss on the podcast? I love that so much. I love those, those two women so much. I love doing that show. And it's hilarious. The reason why I laugh when you say that is like, I had so much fun, but also like I had no filter. <laughs> like, <laughs> The, I don't have a filter when I'm with those two women. Um, I w um, I, again, like I don't have something in mind, but I love the range of topics, and I know that I. One of the things things that's wonderful is that I feel comfortable with the two of them to, enough to explore anything and everything, and I think it is important that we talk about. Like my favorite thing is talk. Thing is talking about fray too, because um, I think that opens uh, really cool doors. So, do you have something that? No, kind of the same. I love how you start with a topic and then it branches off in all sorts of different directions and comes back. But everything is open and honest and real, and it's just it's wonderful. I love so, that. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. And thank you for them. I'm really like I'm proud of them. I'm like yes, they are amazing. Hi, Rachel. Hey. hey. Because of course I was uh, in a post-apocalyptic world, uh, and uh, I said they eat people for food. I felt like that was one of the strangest lines. Um, I also, in that, I think I was like hit with a club and my eyeball fell out or something. Like it was really odd. Uh, <laughs> I've done some weird things. Um, and then what was, sorry. Okay. So weirdest, you said most fun was it? H hardest. Hardest. And how it like changed or affected you. Uh, hardest. Uh, well, literally I think from a, a physical point of view, the hardest, that, that job where I was saying I trained with the Chinese, uh, wushu, uh, 
stunt person. So the way that a lot of stunts are filmed in uh, in in China is that actually the stunt coordinator does the filming um, of the stunts themselves. And so he was actually filming uh, a sequence where they had me going out on uh, it was like a, it was a these bars over a staircase, but it was like really high up. It was like 12 stories up or so or more. And um, he was walking backwards when he was filming on this bar. Uh, and I was absolutely convinced that if I messed up, he could die at any point. Like I literally, like it was a possibility. There was no nets or anything like that. This was not a well thought out um, scenario. Um, and he was very brave, but it scared me. I didn't like the responsibility of holding someone else's life in my hands. Um, so yeah, so that, that was like, I think that was actually, that's up there for sure, of like the hardest. Um, and I was on heels and it's, it was really hard to balance. Um, and then uh, was there, what, what was the, and what, how did it affect me or change me? Um, I feel like all of the characters have stayed with me and, and affected me and changed me and all of these experiences are like ever a part of I love that. I think the best way that acting has affected me, period, is that um, I, oh, I, like my brain wired from such an early age to look at things through other people's eyes and to know that there are multiple ways to see and experience something. Um, and absolutely love that that is an automatic truth for me. Like I, I, I will, when I'm evaluating something, think of it of like, yeah, but if I was that person, if I was a person with this condition or if I was a person from coming from this background and the, the fact that I can do that and I automatically think that way is the biggest gift I've gotten from all of these. So, yeah. I Thanks. love that. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. So like yourself, I have a um, giant love for unicorns. And I was wondering what you would name a, your unicorn if you had one. What I would name my unicorn if I had, by the way, have you seen Unicorn Store yet? I have um, not. It's on my list though. <laughs> I've, I enjoyed it. Um, but, uh, well, this one is, is named Clarence. Um, and we all know why. Um, it's hard for me to think of a unicorn named something else at this point. Um, but for me, like, so I grew up loving fantasy of all kinds. Um, so I love every kind of magical creature and scenario and whatever. I think I was more like into fairies than unicorns as a young person. Um, but the unicorn thing, what I love is that's been shared so much with this supernatural family. That's something like we all created uh, together. And so I love unicorns more and more because of everything it's come to mean to me. So it's hard for me to not associate unicorns partly with that. So I automatically go to that like, yeah, but Cass was my unicorn. Um, but uh, so I go to those names, um, you know, like Clarence. But, uh, but I think there are so many valid, beautiful uh, ways to imagine a unicorn. So what's your unicorn's name? Sprinkles. Sprinkles. I love that. And you have to go watch Unicorn Store. That I will. Just, that has to happen. I will. Um, beautiful. I love that. And what do unicorns mean to you? Uh, just always keep dreaming and believing. You know, never, never give up on magic. Same. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thing worse thing. Hi, um, I have a question. I yes. follow you on social media, of course, and I love your poetry. Um, are you uh, planning on maybe doing a book or a bigger reading tour at some point? Because I think it would be very well received. That is the <laughs> coolest question. Thank you for that. Like, seriously, thank you. It's not, you know, uh, uh, I start sharing, it was mostly poems that I wrote as a young person. 
Um, and then like I've started more stream of consciousness. Sometimes I'll, I'll write and share poems. I've never had much thought to what was gonna happen with that, but it would be absolutely a beautiful like dream to, I've always, I've always wanted to be a writer, but never really been allowed myself to be that. So, um, so that, that acknowledgement means a lot and it'd be super fun to do sometime. And I love getting to share. I just, I think poetry is such a healing and wonderful thing. And I hope that it's an art that's not lost in this world. Um, and it's a form of expression that I find to be really uh, healing and good. So yeah, I would love to do that at some point. I think that's, I love that idea. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, if Meg could come back on the show but only has human, what do you think she would like to experience and what, she would, what would she like to do? As a human? I think um, probably the thing, there's a couple things she never got. I don't think she got like human connection or love or any of those things. I don't think she ever got to, ex or it, it's certainly been a very, very long time um, being a demon that she never got to experience that. So I don't know if that's what Meg would want. I don't know. I don't think she did admit that that's what she want, would want, but I think that I would love to see her have that. What about you? Is there something you'd like to see her have? Emotion, I guess. But yeah. I think she experienced emotion as demon because she got attached to Sam and Dean, obviously. Yeah. Cass. Yeah. So. I completely agree with you. I think she experienced these things, things she knew how to name it or uh, how to admit it. So I would love to, to see her get the chance to actually own that, if that makes sense. And by the way, are you from France? Yes, <laughs> you can I hear it. it. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. You Thank have a beautiful you. accent. Thank you. Yes. Thank you Thank so you. much. Are there any more questions? If not, oh, yeah. Hello. Hi, Rachel. That is awesome. Yeah, I had a photo with you last year. I love so, that. It's thanks. good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Okay, um, so my question is just kind of out there, but I'm going to go for it. Um, go for it. Do you think when Cass was in the empty that maybe he passed up where uh, Meg was? You know, like walking past her? Well, I, I'd be pretty annoyed if he just like walked by. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess it's a possibility, but that's kind of not cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I like to think that like, no, he didn't have a chance to rescue Meg and just like, was like, eh, not today. <laughs> um, so so I, I'm gonna vote no on that one. I feel like, I feel like Cass would have helped Meg out. I feel like the real Misha would have blown you off. I think that's it. <laughs> okay, that's, that's probably what it is. That's the sad truth. I'm kidding. Ladies and gentlemen, you know her, you love her. That's Rachel Miner right there. Oh! And her very own light and highway. She got a ramp of her own. Driving too fast. Sign the banners. 